What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T-Claws. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the random clips. With eight days to go until Cardano smart contract feature activation on their mainnet, smart contract were rolled out on the testnet this past Thursday. That was enough to push a Cardano price to an all-time high of $3.10. That's up nearly 200% from the July 20th lows, right? So those are some legit returns in just over a month and a half. I was hoping to establish a more substantial position before we broke $3, but you know what? At this point, I'm content and comfortable writing this one out and I'll wait for the next double digit correction to add more. Are you currently holding Cardano? Were you able to get in below $2? What about $1? Let me know in the comments below. This week, we had the ChargePoint earning call. We also had Virgin Galactic announce their next flight. That was Unity Flight 23 with the Italian Air Force. And they told us that this flight would take place in late September. Now that news got the stock moving up in a major way, only to have the FAA step in just an hour later saying, no, 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 it's not happening. So in today's video, I'll go over what you need to know about the Virgin Galactic news and how I'm thinking about it then get into the main takeaways from the ChargePoint's earning call and play you a clip from CNBC contributor Josh Brown on why he took a position post-earning call. And I'll close out with a weekly performance review expressed in percentage gain or loss. Last thing to note here before we get into it, I've been getting a few questions from friends who are viewers of the channel around crypto, its utility, and why my portfolio mix is now about 48% crypto. I'll be starting a new crypto news episode series with the first episode dropping next week. If you're interested in hearing more about crypto and enjoy the current content of the channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you're notified each time a new video drops moving forward. All right, let's jump into today's content. So on Thursday, September 2nd, Richard Branson tweeted about the Virgin Galactic Unity 23 flight. This is said to be the company's first commercial flight with the Italian Air Force. This is also their last scheduled flight for 2021, and it will be revenue generating, so it's a fairly big deal, right? You can watch my coverage of their Q2 earning call here, where I discuss what comes next from a flight cadence perspective. The stock popped on the announcement with a gain of nearly 11% at $28.70 before falling off a cliff on the FAA grounding Virgin Galactic headlines. The stock closed the week down nearly 6% at $24.37. So what happened? Well, during the Virgin Galactic flight in July with Richard Branson on board, a warning light on the flight console lit up. This was during the rocket burn portion of the flight as they were rocketing towards space, right? So there are a number of reasons why this can happen, but the outcome here and what actually matters is that the crew ended up flying outside of the pre-approved clearance zone. So in total, during the ascent and descent, Spaceship 2 was out of the air traffic control clearance zone for 1 minute and 40 seconds. The total flight was about 15 minutes, so it's a decent chunk. Now, if you're wondering why this matters, it's because the clearance zone is established to ensure the safety of the flight occupants, as well as the other air traffic in area, and the safety of those on the ground in the event of a crash. So even though the flight was a huge success, understanding what caused the deviation is still worth evaluating. The FAA initiated an investigation shortly after they received the flight data, and Virgin has been cooperating since then. Now, my take on why the FAA decided to ground Virgin now versus a month ago is likely purely driven by the FAA making a statement. So Virgin Galactic is looking to normalize space tourism, but there are still air traffic control rules and regulations that must be followed to ensure this new industry is as safe as it can be. This is therefore, in my opinion, the FAA's way of telling Virgin Galactic, you can't go announcing new flights until the ongoing investigation is sufficiently addressed. Personally, that makes sense to me and I think it's fair. The main concern here and why the stock likely sold off is likely because many investors are now worried about how much of a delay this will cause the spaceflight program after the already extended timeline communicated during the last earning call. Am I worried about this? No, no I'm not, and, and this is why. The FAA was aware of the flight deviation since July and have been conducting their own investigation since then. Had this been a major issue, it would have made headlines much sooner than this. So this tells me that the issue is likely minor and it's truly more about compliance than actual public safety 
or the safety around Virgin's Galactic flight program. So my closing thoughts here are this. Even though I didn't add on the dip, buying at this level would represent a near 200% return on investment once we return to the previous all-time high of $62.80. Now, this is not to be taken as financial advice, but it's certainly worth your consideration if you're looking to add or start a new position. Also, keep in mind that anyone who bought a year ago for perspective at this time is still up just over 47%. If we assume that we can hit a 47% compound annual growth rate year over year between now and 2025, you're looking at a stock price of $113. So some perspective for you, and I will say, think long term. Moving on to ChargePoint, the earning call was held on Wednesday, September 1st, and despite ChargePoint being the largest infrastructure player in the EV charging space, they're still not turning a profit. Earning per share, or EPS, came in line with expectations at a loss of 13 cents, but that's not what really matters for a growing company. What matters is sales revenue, cash burn, and customer acquisition. Essentially, how well are they executing as they march towards achieving economy of scale. Following the earning call results, the stock popped 9.23% to $23.38 before dropping and finishing the week with a gain of 3.32% at $22.11. What you actually need to know is this. Not only did ChargePoint sales beat expectations, but management raised their sales forecast from $60 million to $65 million for the third quarter, for context, analysts currently have this model at only $55 million. Full year guidance was also raised, with ChargePoint now expecting about $230 million in sales, up from the prior 200 or so millions. Again, comparatively, Wall Street consensus is modeling only $208 million for 2021 total sales. That was the big surprise. David Kelly from Jefferies reiterated his buy rating on ChargePoint with a price target of $40. You can see his reasoning on the screen here. But basically, EV sales are already ahead of consensus and his projections do not take into account the upside surprise. I expect we'll see some revision to his and other price targets likely as the year goes on and we get more clarity on the infrastructure bill. Let me play you this clip from Josh Brown, who's a CNBC contributor as well as the co-founder and CEO of Ritholds Wealth Management. They manage over $2 billion for high net worth investors, corporate retirement plans and foundations. Take a listen as to why he has taken a position. I, I've been following ChargePoint Holdings for, for quite a while, and uh, I, I hadn't really listened to a, a conference call from the company yet. I think this is only their second one since being de or maybe their third. But I really liked what I heard on the call, and although the stock was up uh, this morning, I bought it anyway. I don't need to pay the lowest price, um, but it's sort of a trade for now. It may turn into an investment. I don't have a lot of it. Uh, I'm going to use 20 as as uh, as my stop loss, uh, but I think that's pretty solid support. If you look back to uh, April, that seems to be where the buyers have come in. They beat on they beat on uh, revenue. Revenue is the only thing that matters. This is a company that sees themselves as being the enabler of the EV revolution uh, in terms of charging stations, like over a hundred thousand places that people, corporations, etc., can charge their vehicles. So I don't really want to bet on like Volkswagen versus Tesla versus Benz. To me, that's boring. This is really exciting. The company that's building out the infrastructure. By 2030, it's estimated that uh, something like 30% of all light vehicles sold uh, will be electric vehicles. Even if that's overstated, let's say directionally it's right, and it's only 20% or 15%, that's going to mean a lot of charging stations and a lot of needed infrastructure. And to me, this was one of the better uh, pure plays to, to capture that. So I'm in the stock. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. And I'm still learning about it. So I don't want anyone to just like blindly follow me in. Please do your own research and, uh, and please think about whether or not it makes sense for your own portfolio. Just because it makes sense for me, it doesn't necessarily make sense for you. I think you nailed it. And this is precisely why I've been an investor for over a year now. Again, taking a longer term view here, yes, the stock is down over 50% from the all time high of $49.48, but we are up nearly 117% from a year ago at this time. Now, keep in mind that ChargePoint currently holds about 70% of market share in the US, and they are projecting they can capture up to 25% market share in Europe by 2025, which would be a significant upside from current levels. Looking at the projected PL or profit and losses, 
ChargePoint going out to 2026 expects to turn cash flow positive in 2024 and over double revenue by 2026 to just over 2 billion and a nearly quadruple profit by 2026 for an estimated 340 million. Now, this represents a compound annual growth rate of 70% year over year. This outlook potential is exactly why Josh is now on board. Last point I'll make here to give you some perspective. If you apply that 70% compound annual growth rate directly to the stock price, it gets you to $312 in 2026, right? Now that seems super bullish, but not improbable. My personal price target is in the $200 to $250 range. With that in mind, buying at this level is a bargain. That's precisely why I've been adding throughout the month of August and will continue to add while we're sub $25. Again, not financial advice. I'm simply sharing my approach to give you some perspective. Getting into the weekly performance review, express in percentage gain or loss, this was a solid week. We're seeing a resurgence in crypto and for good reasons. Check out last week's video here if you missed some of those reasons. But Bitcoin is hovering around 50K and Ethereum is back at the 40,000 level, which is only a few hundred dollars away from its all time high. I told you guys about taking a position in Hive blockchain as a strategic midterm play. As a Bitcoin and Ethereum miner, they are benefiting from the asset price appreciation and have already gained 19% this week with a 33% gain over the past month. This solid push here means that at the top, I was up by 11.83% before a small retracement and closing the week with a 10.66% gain. Momentum is building and that's what I like to see. And with that, this will do it for today's video. Hopefully you found the content insightful. If so, please drop the video a like if you haven't already and share with others as it greatly helps the channel grow. For my newcomers, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content just like this. As a reminder, I post every Sunday and moving forward in week videos will be geared towards crypto. Thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.